Okay. Yeah. Uh, program two, I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. I don't, I don't know if we were already being uh, live streamed. Correct. Okay. If we can uh, start with the, the roll call by the city liaison. Yes. Um, Ms. Uh, as I mentioned, Ms. Maria Olivares will not be joining us today. Um, Ra Raul Reyes. Present. Uh, Dr. Gaskin. Present. Uh, Ms. Robert Roberta Ceballos. Present. Mr. Roberto Telles. Present. Ms. Karen Elizondo. Present. And Mr. Juan Vargas. Present. Um, Chairman, you have a quorum. I think the next item is uh, citizens' comments. Is there a couple of minutes if you want to motion? If uh, I know we did submit uh, for review the minutes from our last meeting of August 3rd. If you all had a chance to review them, if there's any uh, revisions or additions you all would want to make, uh, if not, you all can motion to, to approve. Did anybody have any revisions to the minutes? If, if not, I'd entertain a motion to accept uh, as read. No moved. Is there a motion? Is there a second? A second. As we move and second, um, if there's no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed aye. signify by saying nay. Motion passes. I believe we've. Uh, I think we had the agenda up, but I don't see it anymore. Oh, if you want, uh, I can I can read it if you like. The fourth or four is citizen comments. Uh, citizens are required to fill out uh, an online witness card no later than twelve fifteen on August seventh. Um, Nadia, did we have we received any comments? Not at this moment. Like you mentioned, Ms. Martinez, we have up to twelve fifteen to receive comments, but there's none at this time. Mr. Tejas, we can leave this item toward the end so that we can revisit and close it up after 12.15 if there's no comments that are received. Let's, let's go ahead with the next agenda item. Okay. Uh, agenda uh, number five is discussion and possible action to review, score, evaluate, and provide recommendation for third party funding 2020-2021. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I did check this more. Well, this, this yesterday afternoon, and I believe there was still some committee members that were still reviewing um, the the items. Um, so I, all I have, I have one committee member that I had all the scores up for, but I have not received any others. I don't know if you all wanna discuss anything. Do you all wanna give me the numbers verbally or do you all want me to just um, wait until, or you, you know, set a, a specific deadline and that way for our next meeting, I have them all. Um, it's up to you all. You y'all can discuss. Um, if I may, oh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the only uh, I think today the um, uh, we were supposed to get an update on all of those uh, applications that were uh, maybe not deemed incomplete, but that had some information missing, um, so that that would aid us and prepare us during the weekend to go ahead and successfully complete the scoring of um, all the applicants so that on Monday, um, and this was my understanding, I could be wrong, that on Monday we can formally take uh, uh, action on it. Karen, you had some, uh, had yes. you also had something? I had trouble um, submitting my score, so I do have my scores. I, okay. I have not completed them all, but I do. I believe the ones that I finished first were, were the whole um applications. Okay, and and it's up to the uh, committee if you want to share them right now, or if you want to just email them to me, and I'll compile them together for our next meeting. Um, that's up to the the committee. Is is there an update though for those? Uh... Yes, uh, I did. I did um, forward you all. Well, I had I had staff send you all an email yesterday, I believe afternoon, just to give you on the hotel motel side. There was three agencies that were missing. Maybe a bit of information or like um, had not had a signature. You know, um, I know there was a big and, and we did reach out to all the agencies and the consensus was that that one sheet that one eight to other agencies 
that missing signature was a confusing part for many of them. Basically, it was all the same response. There, there was a misconception. They thought that it had to be signed by our city secretary, not theirs. So the ones that left it blank really was for that reason. And I can see where that was confusing because we, we did have the city secretary information on top, and then we asked for corporation signature. So it's kind of, you know, um, so I do see where that was. But let me give you all an overall um, a view. The summary that I did submit to you all yesterday, uh, Border Olympics uh, did submit their marketing plan. Um, uh, it was just an oversight on their part. They had forgotten to, they, they thought they had included it, they had, but they hadn't. Uh, Laredo Heat Youth Soccer, um, they did submit the three items that were pending, uh, their most recent IRS, uh, their marketing plan, and the that signature page on the aid to um, sig uh, aid on uh, other agency signature. Now, on the, on the marketing plan, I also did go back and look at the application, and the marketing plan is not part of the checklist, but it is part of the application so it, it it would I understand where someone could get confused in was it part of you, the checklist or not? So I do understand where that confusion might have come. Um, the and then the third one was uh, Mexican Culture Institute of Laredo, which was the, again the signature. So from hotel motel, those three items, I mean they they did comply, they submitted, they gave us their response, which I I forward to you all. But I do believe there were just, you know, minor little minor. yeah, items. And then as far as general fund, we did have 12 uh, applications that had similar situations. So that signature page on that aid um, form was very common to most of these. Um, so number one, Bethany House, we did receive the, the, the signature, the page signed. Number two, Border Region. Um, did have a little bit longer items. Their annual report had not been submitted. Um, they were missing one signature on the ap actual application. And the expenditures, they had given me all the, the expenditures, but they hadn't really pointed out how much of their third party funding was going to be like, it's part of that. So um, they did clarify that. Uh, Boys and Girls Club, it was really just the articles of incorporation was not eleg legible. But I think it's because it, it's uploaded a copy of a copy. So they were able to submit to us and it's they were included. They did include everything. It was just really not legible on our part. So we had them resubmit. Uh, Catholic Charities, um, again, the signature page was incomplete. Uh, approval of their minutes. They did note that due, due to COVID, they hadn't had a recent meeting, so that's where they had not submitted their um, their approved minutes, but they were able to submit just their last meeting. So they, they did that and um, their current policy and procedures again that had not been uploaded. Um, Imaginarium of South Texas, they stated. Um, oh, the signature page again, and it was submitted. Um, and the only the other only other thing is that they stated that they don't have a, a charter from the state of Texas, so we'll verify that with um, with legal if that's a requirement that would, um, you know, stop them later on from entering into contract. But uh, we we can check that. Um, Laredo Amateur uh, Boxing is the only one that mm -hmm. did not respond to us, I believe, um, as of yet. Um, and I'll double check. Nadia, can you just double check with Letty in case um, they did submit anything by the deadline it was six o'clock yesterday, but as of five yesterday, they hadn't. Um, and then Laredo Crime Stoppers, uh, they were just missing their most recent 990, which again, they thought since they hadn't filed it yet, they didn't think they could submit the previous one. So we uh, we got that information. Uh, Mercy, Mercy Ministries um, signature page, I mean, again, the A2 other agencies certification was missing the signature. They complied uh, Sacred Heart. Uh, the expenditure uh, sheet didn't have actual estimates based on this grant. So they, they updated that and they corrected that. Um, scan, um, 
missing signature, they fixed that. Special Olympics missing the signature on the same form, they fixed it. And then veterans, volunteers serving the need, they did mention to me that they don't have an, uh, an official annual report and that's why they had put NA. But I did explain to them that it's, it doesn't have to be an official board issued annual report. It could be just a, a report on what they did last year um, and so they gave me a, a basically their own annual report of like accomplishments and stuff, but that's where they have put not applicable because they, and last year they did the same. They actually did not submit an annual report because they felt that they don't have an official annual report. And, and that's, that's basically the report. Um, so as of, um, as of yesterday, I do feel that they all have complied except for the Laredo amateur boxing. And really the amateur boxing, all that they were missing is. Um, it might be a technicality. It might still be able. You might still be able to form um, the. You know, you might still be able to score it. It's just that on the expenditure form, they their estimates um, wasn't matching their. Um, I think their actuals. They they were just they were not matching. Um, I think that was the the issue there. But it might still be, you might still be able to remember that's a form that it, it's, it's graded by points. So if you feel that that form wasn't completed incorrectly or it's missing information for you to don't, you don't have to give them the full points. You can remove points for that. And I think it's think confirmed that they haven't submitted it yet. Okay. Um, so, so that is my, my report chairman. Thank you. I think we're about to hit the 12:15 mark. Um, do we have any citizens' comments? I think we're maybe a couple seconds away. Yes. Give me one second. Let me refresh the screen. Maybe I, I jumped the gun 30 seconds too early. <laughs> We don't have any comments at this moment, but yeah, we have about a couple of seconds left. Yeah, 12.15, yeah. Thank no, we don't have any comments, in. Mr. Chairman. Yes, no comments. Okay, okay. Um, how is everybody else doing with their story? I know Karen said she has hers with her. Um, I just guess I, I need to, you know, get the room temperature here. Any? Um, mine are incomplete, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have I started working on the general fund um, through the uh, uh, system that was uh, provided access to, and um, I did leave all of those that had any markings or uh, of you know incomplete uh, submissions uh, completely blank. Anybody else have issues? Um... Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes, sir. On the marketing plan for Laredo Heat or any of the other applicants that have athletic type activities, is there uh, any mention of what they would do if the pandemic cancels their activities? So I, I believe um, I don't believe they did, but what's what's going on this year is that I have gotten some requests and, and I'll share this information with the committee. I have gotten some requests from the hotel motel um, events uh, or organizations that were about to work on some events. And for some reason, you know, it felt within the pandemic months. So they, at, at the beginning it was, you know, a request to allow to postpone, which we, we allowed them to postpone it. But at this point, we're getting requests that they wanna do virtual events. But we have had to advise um, a, a few hotel motel recipients that virtual events do not qualify under the hotel motel t occupancy reg government, you know, state regulations. So um, I, I wanna say, Mr. Vargas, to your question is, there's not really a plan. It's it's either it gets done or it doesn't get done. And if it doesn't get done, they're they're remember their contract is going to be on a reimbursement basis. So if the event doesn't happen, there's no reimbursement done because hotel motel does get triggered by heads to beds. They have to show 
that since this money comes from the hotel motel industry and the taxes that are charged to them, they have to show that they are bringing um, tourism and heads to beds, how they mentioned. Um, so, so, so basically, if it, the event doesn't happen, we won't reimburse. And we are um, in that situation with a few recipients this current year. So this current year, there might be some money that just goes back to the to the pot of money. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I I have my report and my scores done, so I could just email them to you. Yes, please, please um, email them to to me. Um, it's it's the email is m martinez two. I believe you you all see it on on the or any of my staff, uh, Leti or Nadia. Uh, just email them to us, and we'll compile them all together. And Karen, you mentioned the same thing that you already yes. have. You can submit them too. I have my hotel motel ones completed, but uh, on the general funds, I don't have them all completed. Okay. Because of the, some of the funds I were missing, but I, I I'll finish it by by the weekend. Also, I I do I did notice that some of the applications did did mention about how they were working with this whole pandemic thing, but um. I, would, I just, that's just because I'm wondering if we should take since you mentioned the thing about the points, if we should take that into consideration because um, some of them do have how they're working as um, with everything. Uh, that's on the general funds with the whole pandemic thing, but others don't mention anything like that. And I noticed that with the also with the hotel motel, for example, the the Laredo Center of the Arts, how they're offering like virtual classes or virtual um, something with, with um uh in the organization but then we should take that into consideration right for the point. correct yes you, you should you should definitely take that into consideration especially for the hope to multi category is we need to fund activities that will generate um heads to beds so yeah. So if if you feel that their explanation or the alternatives are not gonna, then we should uh, definitely take that into consideration when when you um, when you find when you grade them. Also, what I would wanna uh, suggest to the the committee. I know I mentioned to you in our last meeting, um, and I have had some uh, further discussion with our budget department and our management team. And, you know, this year is going to get really, really, really uh, tough, you know, so they did ask uh, for the committee to really consider even for general fund what priorities, you know, should be considered. Um, what type of services to the community are essential and which ones, you know, we could possibly not fund or, you know, or defund or lower funding. Um, because it is gonna really get down to that. I, I did mention to you just just for the general fund, um, you know, request. We got seven hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars of of request, and we only have four hundred. Well, we're we're trying to budget. We're still, you know, the budget process is still gonna start on Tuesday. We're trying to budget four hundred and four, but even four hundred and four might be a stretch. That's the number they gave me to work with right now. But the reality is, if we can come even under that, that we, you know, or or just to really consider the services that we think that are going to be essential for these next, you know, uh, this next fiscal year, mm -hmm. because the reality is that, you know, we're not. It, it doesn't look like we're going to be having events anytime this year. So the first three months of the year are are not going to be showing any any. Any activities? Okay. Thank you, Karen. Um, was everybody able to finish their hotel motel uh, mm -hmm. scoring? So I finished the general funding, and I think I have about three left in the hotel motel. So I should be finished up by today. Okay. So then we're gonna have to re. re <laughs> I think. Um, I think I'll tell you exactly. I have one, two. I have two left. Actually, no, four left. I have four left that I need to do. Okay. Um, I, I, the only concern I have is I don't think we're going to be able to do everything on one day on Monday. Um, will we be able to have uh, another meeting on Tuesday morning? 
we we can push we can I Nadia are we still okay to push another no it, yeah we, we might be able to still push another meeting if we post it if we post it today we can still push another meeting for Tuesday morning. But yes, um since budget does start at, at five, I would suggest that it be a meeting. I mean we're gonna have a lot of tough decisions to make. Um timing the belt's not gonna be easy. Um, so I, I'd like to give us a lot of, enough time to have enough discussion so we can make the right decision. Okay. Do you want to put that in a formal motion to to schedule a meeting Tuesday? Well, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion if, if someone would uh, make it uh, for a Tuesday meeting uh, in case we run over on Monday. Uh, only only because I know we're not we're not we're going to be time limited on time. Uh, I don't know how everybody else's schedule is. I can make time for the afternoon, uh, but I don't know how if everybody else can. Is, is that, I mean, how much time does everybody have on Monday to have uh, this discussion? I think on Monday. Because we already have a scheduled meeting at 12, so you're saying if it spills over to a two hour meeting, could everybody yes. do that? Or three hour just, meeting, I think. Yes, I mean, or, or spin it over to two meetings. Meaning, you know, Monday maybe an hour and a half, and then Tuesday another hour and a half. Does that work better? Um, or do you all want to do Monday lunch and then Monday afternoon? I mean, you all let us know what you all want to do. Now, this is mind you, this is everyone turning in everything and me having all the scores so that Monday we start discussion. Yes, if I may just make a, you know, a quick comment and maybe recommendation or suggestion. Um, I really do feel that um, a lot of us um, might have the time necessary during the weekend to evaluate uh, accordingly, um, not only with our scores, but also look at the information that's been provided by staff and do our recommendations right then and there. And perhaps maybe even an email, um, Ms. Martinez, uh, our recommendations as to how much, you know, we would in essence fund based on the scoring criteria. So perhaps maybe when we do get uh, a chance to meet on Monday, we can already have all those totals um, and how they've ranked and you know compared with the uh numbers that everybody has submitted um so that you know we can make those uh decisions right then and there and i you know and this is i could be wrong but i don't feel that we'll need another meeting um i think if we discipline ourselves enough to do so uh during this weekend and provide the information um by sunday um, you know, we can have all the information needed to make a sound decision um, Monday based on the scoring uh, that's been uh, provided and on the results uh, based on the scoring system that I'm pretty sure you already have a mechanism, you know, to compile all the scores and, uh, you know, classify each one based on the rank, uh, of course. That's just my, uh, you know, uh, um, suggestion. I think it's a great one. Uh, it, would, would anybody have an issue with that? Uh, adding possibly the amount that they would want awarded to their score sheets. That's something everybody can look into. I agree with what Mr. Vea just said. I agree. I can share with you all uh, a, a spreadsheet that I, the one that we usually work with in the committee. It'll have the name of the agency, it'll have their current amount, it'll have their requested amount, and then the committee recommendation. So each of you can fill that committee recommendation and we could also look at that. Okay. I think that'd be perfect. Great, great suggestion at all. Uh, uh, do we need that in a motion? Do we need to, I don't. Well, the only motion I would entertain is if you all want to set yourselves a deadline uh, that you all are committing to submit uh, you know, maybe entertain a motion to to submit uh, by Sunday, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. You know, something so that it could give us time on Monday morning to uh, to to tally it up from the system. I mean, Sunday e evening, so you guys can have the morning to, like you said, tally the system. 
Um, I'd say, you know, I'd, I'd like to entertain a motion um, that we set the, the deadline uh, Sunday 6 p.m. Um, so that all these submissions are already submitted and, that, and therefore on Monday, um, it, it'll give uh, staff ample time to compile all the information, all the scores, and have it ready for our noon meeting. Is, second there, that. There's, a second? Second. there's a second by Mr. Vargas. It's been moving second in. Uh, we, were you able to get the, the motion down correctly? Okay, perfect. Is yes. there any discussion on the motion? If there's no discussion, I, I'd like to go ahead and move. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All the aye. folks signify by saying nay. Aye. Motion approved. Um, okay, so perfect. So then, uh, uh, if anything, we will be having our meeting again on Monday uh, with that compiled list and the uh, proposed funding. If there's no other business uh, to be had, I'd, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Has been moved I'll by Mr. Vargas to adjourn and seconded by Mr. by Dr. Gaskins. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you guys. See you on Monday.